Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nidhi and you're watching my series on how to become a cabin crew. Now you all know that my channel is dedicated to all the cabin crew aspirants and uh, wannabe flight attendants. But at the same time, uh, given the experience and knowledge that I have gained with my 10 years uh, of flying with Singapore Airlines, uh, not just as a flight stewardess, but also as a leading stewardess, an in-house trainer, a safety ambassador, a cultural ambassador, I feel that my channel should also add value to all the existing cabin crew and flight attendants. And that is why I have started this initiative where we're going to be doing another series where we'll be doing a lot of cultural exchange. Yes. Now, we all know when it comes to your cabin crew interviews, uh, you know, uh, me and Julia, we always say that uh, cultural awareness, cultural intelligence is a very important prerequisite. And this is something that you will also notice uh, is very evident on the website of different airlines whenever they talk about, uh, you know, their service to passengers. They always talk about how uh, blending different cultures, how respecting people from different cultures and basically, uh, uh, you know, attuning your service, your uh, uh, the services that the airlines offer uh, basically to people from different cultures is really, really important. And that is something that they would like to see, uh, not just in the interviews, but also when you're actually a cabin crew of that particular airline. So having that culture Cultural intelligence will definitely make you stand out as a cabin crew uh, while you're actually communicating with your passengers in flight. But at the same time, it will make you stand out in your interviews because when it comes to those role plays or when you're answering questions, when you're able to quote examples, when you're able to show that cultural intelligence by actually incorporating them in your answers, it will definitely give you uh, a head start in comparison to anyone else. Uh, but that is only possible when you have knowledge. Now, being culturally intelligent is really important, but that would only come to you when you have the right knowledge. So that is why I want this channel to uh, be a source of that knowledge for all of you. And on that note, I uh, do want to direct you to uh, Julia's channel, uh, Julia George, uh, someone that I draw a lot of inspiration from. She has definitely shared some useful videos uh, when it comes to uh, being culturally intelligent. Do go ahead and check them out. Uh, but in today's video, I want to share with you food um, uh, customs around the world that will make you culturally more intelligent. So let's get started. Don't fork around. <laughs> well, when it comes to dining etiquettes, we all know uh, using a fork and spoon or using fork and knife um, are, are basically considered uh, major utensils. But that's not the case when it comes to Thailand because fork cannot be used to put the food inside your mouth. Unlike any other uh, dining uh, etiquette when it comes to other nationalities, Thailand is very, very different because it's considered actually very crude if you use the fork to push the food inside your mouth. The primary purpose of the fork is actually to push the food towards your spoon. You can cut the food with your spoon on your knife and basically then push uh, the food using the fork towards your knife and then actually uh, towards the spoon and then uh, scoop uh, the food into your spoon and then put it inside your mouth. Slurp loud, slurp proud. Well, not in every country, but only in Japan. It is not just something that is acceptable, but it is also encouraged. Unlike any other country where uh, if you actually slurp your food or your soup, uh, people would probably think that it's bad dining etiquette. But in Japan, people encourage you to do that because when you uh, slurp your soup or your noodle soup like ramen, it actually goes to show that you're enjoying all the flavors of the soup and uh, that basically goes to show to the person who has served you the food that he or she has done a good job. So that is why whenever you're in Japan next, you've got to go ahead and slurp your soup. Are you a right-hander or a left-hander? Well, in a lot of Middle Eastern countries, eating with your hand is considered one of uh, the ways to enjoy your food. However, both right and left hand are actually not considered equal. Right hand in Middle Eastern countries is actually reserved for uh, all dining etiquette when it comes to eating food and also picking up food from the table. If you actually use your left hand to reach out uh, to pick up the food, uh, that uh, might actually uh, result in insult to the host. So that is something that you definitely want to remember whenever you're eating with someone from the Middle Eastern country. Respecting your elders. In South Korea, it is considered to be a sign of disrespect if you actually take the food first, 
if you're sitting with a group of people and there is an elderly person on the table, it is considered that the first bite of the food should be taken by the eldest person of the family or in the group that you're sitting with. Of course, um, this is something that you wouldn't want to do when you're sitting with friends. This is something more uh, for a family-related dinner. Uh, so always remember, let the elders reach out to the food first or help them with the food first and then go ahead and take that bite. Chopstick etiquette. Now, when it comes to China, uh, a lot of people use chopsticks to eat their food and uh, something that you definitely should take note of, uh, especially when you are on that sector or when you are actually in the company of uh, Chinese people. Uh, always remember whenever you use your chopsticks, you should never use them and point uh, at someone in a different direction whenever you're eating food that is actually considered really rude and at the same time uh, whenever you want to put your chopstick uh, back into the rice bowl you should never put it back vertically now the reason is because uh, they always do this on funerals and something that is uh, not to be done on a dinner table when it is not an occasion of a funeral. So something that we definitely want to take note of, you should always put the chopsticks by the side of the bowl or you could put them on top of the bowl uh, on, um, uh, in, in this particular position horizontally and not vertically. Clean your plates or don't. Well, when it comes to Japan and India, it might be considered really, really good that you should not leave any food on your plate. But when it comes to China, again, you should actually not clean your plate entirely because um, your host might think that they might, did not feed you enough or you did not get enough food. And that is why uh, you definitely have to leave a little bit of food on the plate, which is an indication that you are full and your host actually treated you really, really well. After dinner, milk anyone? Well, a lot of times we would like to have a nice cup of cappuccino uh, when it comes to uh, our dinner. Uh, but if you were to do this in Italy, it would actually be considered as something that will hinder your digestion. And of course, it's not going to be something that's going to incite an outrage uh, because you ask for a cup of frothy cappuccino after dinner. But it will definitely make you uh, stand out as a tourist because... Italians don't actually drink milk after the dinner uh, because, as I said, it actually hinders uh, their digestion. Don't flip the fish. Again, when it comes to China, especially the coastal regions where fishing is basically the primary occupation, uh, and if you're sitting um, in, in, a, in a dining environment, uh, flipping the fish to eat the other side of the fish is actually considered superstitious um, because it might bring bad luck. Uh, it's uh, quite uh, similar to capsizing the boat, which means the boat uh, getting, uh, up, uh, you know, uh, upside down or turning upside down in the water, uh, which is basically uh, uh, bringing bad luck or misfortune. So if you want to eat the fish, you must uh, eat the top of the fish and then basically work your uh, way through the bones to put the bone aside so you can actually get to the flesh, uh, which is at the bottom of the fish. That's how you would do it uh, when it comes to uh, China and especially eating fish, a whole fish uh, when it comes to the dining uh, or table manners. Again, the chopstick comes back, but this time we're in Japan. Now, when it comes to Japan, uh, it is considered rude to actually pass the food using chopsticks. Uh, reason being, uh, basically bones are passed um, using chopsticks in funerals. And again, something that you wouldn't want to be reminded of when it comes to uh, dining, uh, you know, uh, with the people of that particular culture. And that is why you should never use chopsticks to pass the food when it comes to Japan. Would you like to have a cup of tea or coffee? <laughs> used to be one of my favorite lines when it comes to the flights that I used to do uh, from Singapore to London. When it comes to Britain um, and its table manners uh, while drinking tea, it's really important that you should not um, make a lot of clink clank sound when you're actually stirring, um, uh, when you put sugar or uh, you know anything inside your tea, you should not make that clink clank sound. You should try avoid uh, touching the rim of the cup or the cup itself using that teaspoon. And of course, when you're done stirring, you should not leave the teaspoon inside the cup, but you should actually place it by the side or on the saucer. Well, I definitely love being served. But as a flight attendant, it's really important that I need to learn some serving etiquettes. When it comes to Korea, again, uh, it is actually considered really rude if you pour yourself a drink. Uh, you should always allow your host to pour a drink for you. Or for that matter of fact, you can actually ask the host if they can pour a drink for you, but you should never do that by yourself.
don't use your hands. <laughs> that is something that is believed in Chile because uh, it's considered unhygienic and at the same time uh, they believe that hands should not be used to eat food uh, regardless of whether you're eating a drumstick or you're actually eating, you, you, you're eating fries, you should actually be using fork and knife to eat your food. When it comes to India, uh, a lot of people actually prefer using their hands uh, but the thing to note is that you should always use your right hand because the left hand is actually considered unhygienic and at the same time Indians believe that using uh, your hands to eat uh, gives you basically that uh, it, it brings up all the juices that will help you with the digestion but what you need to remember is that you should not actually use your entire hand and you should not really eat like this you should use your fingers to pick up the food and then you should actually push the food using your thumb instead of actually pushing everything inside your mouth. So that is something that you want to do whenever you want to enjoy that amazing Indian food uh, but delicately. And the last one for the day, when it comes to dining in countries like Portugal and Egypt, uh, you wouldn't want to ask for salt and pepper because uh, that goes to show that chef might not have done a great job and uh, the food is not flavorful and that is why you want to add more salt and pepper to your food and that is what they culturally believe in. Well, so that brings us to the end of this video. Well, you might call them strange, uh, but uh, it's really, really important that we should actually be aware of them uh, for two reasons. One, whenever you're actually dining with people from different cultures or different nationalities, uh, by actually allowing yourself to um, follow these uh, traditions, these values or upkeep with them actually will show that you respect the other person and that is really, really important. And number two, it will actually show you in, in the light of someone who is actually culturally intelligent because um, you know, you've taken some time out to understand what the other person's traditions or beliefs are when it comes to the dining etiquettes and putting them into practice while you're enjoying or relishing that food will actually show that you're someone who cares, who's someone uh, who is someone who basically uh, want to be culturally aware and want to immerse yourself in someone else's tradition, values and beliefs when it comes to their cultures, especially when it comes to their dining etiquettes. So I really hope you find value in this video and you're able to actually bring some of these tips back to your dining etiquettes when you're meeting your friends from different um, cultures around the world and I'm going to incorporate some of them as well and if you do like the video do remember to like share and comment do share with me uh, what are some of the things you would like me to cover in this mini cultural exchange series that I'm doing as part of how to become a cabin crew uh, videos on this particular channel and of course uh, do not forget to press the notification bell so you can be updated when the next video comes out and if you still haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, now is the time to hit that subscribe button. And you all know that I do actually coach cabin crew aspirants, uh, but I'm also an interview specialist uh, when it comes to service industry. So uh, do get in touch with us on our website if you'd like to know how we can train you for your upcoming interviews uh, for that service related job. So till that time, all of you out there, uh, stay safe and uh, take care of yourselves. Love you guys. Bye.